بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ٹوک اباؤٹ سی ایس ایف رائنوریا بائی دا ورڈ سی ایس ایف وی مین سیربرو اسپائنل فلوئڈ رائنوریا Now, CSF rhinorrhea, by definition, is leakage of cerebrospinal fluid into the nose. It may be clear fluid or mixed with blood. Cerebrospinal fluid, called CSF in short, is a clear colorless body fluid found in the brain and spine. It is produced in the choroid plexuses of the ventricles of the brain. It acts as a cushion or buffer for the brain's cortex, providing basic mechanical and immunological protection to the brain inside the skull. Now, how the CSF is produced and where does it go to? Cerebrospinal fluid or CSF is produced by choroid plexus in the lateral ventricle and fourth ventricles. Now, third ventricle, it goes towards the third ventricle through foramen of Monroe. And then through the aqueduct or sylvius, it goes to the fourth ventricle. And then through the foramina of Lushka, it goes to the subarachnoid space over brain and spinal cord. And then reabsorbed into the venous sinus blood via arachnoid granulations. This is another picture which shows the pathway of CSF flow. Now the basics of CSF, its total volume varies from 90 to 150 milliliters and it is secreted at the rate of about 20 mil per hour which is 300 to 350 mil per day. Therefore, total CSF is replaced three to five times a day. Normal CSF pressure at lumbar puncture is 50 to 150 millimeters of water. It rises on coughing, sneezing, nose blowing, straining on his tools or lifting heavy veins. Etiology of CSF rhinorrhea, the most common cause of CSF rhinorrhea is trauma. Now, it can be either accidental or surgical. We're talking about accidents, accidents can be uh, road traffic accidents or accidents due to a fall. where surgical trauma includes endoscopic sinus surgery, transsphenoidal hypophysectomy, nasal polypectomy, and skull-based surgery. Inflammations can also cause CSF rhinorrhea, and the examples can be mucosils of sinuses, sinu nasal polyposis, fungal infections of sinuses, and osteomyelitis of the bones, such as frontal sinus, frontal bones. The, all these conditions cause inflammation and they erode the bone and dura. Now, neoplasms or new growths like 
benign and malignant, they can invade the skull base, leading to CSF rhinorrhea. Congenital lesions such as meningocele and meningoencephalocele or, me or gliomas, they can all lead to CSF rhinorrhea, where certain other cases can be idiopathic, where the cause is unknown. Now, where is the site of leakage of CSF? It could either be through the anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, or through the temporal bone. Now, anterior cranial fossa leakage through the cribriform plate, or the root of ethmoidal cells, or through the frontal sinus. Whereas middle cranial fossa, due to injuries to sphenoid sinus, one can have CSF rhinorrhea. Whereas temporal bone fractures lead to CSF rhinorrhea, CSF in this case reaches middle ear and then escapes through the eustachian tube into the nose. CSF otorhinorrhea. This is a figure showing the pathway of CSF leakage. Anterior shows the frontal sinus and leakage through the frontal sinus into the nasal cavity, other through the ethmoid sinus, and yet another shows through the sphenoid sinus and the eustachian tube through temporal bone fractures. Now, important questions to ask in cases of CSF rhinorrhea are whether there has been any recent trauma to the patient, whether there is history of recurrent meningitis or not, whether there has been recent sinus surgery or endoscopic surgery or neurosurgery, and whether there has been a history of hydrocephalus or increased intracranial pressure. Physical examination. We have to do a complete otolaryngological examination, then cranial nerve testing, nasal endoscopy, weight and BMI, testing for meningeal irritation such as Nucal rigidity, Koenig sign, or Brudzinski sign. Laboratory testing in active rhinorrhea, fluid sample can be collected at initial evaluation. With intermittent rhinorrhea, patient may collect sample at home. And we need at least 0.5 mL of fluid. There is a clinical test called hand handkerchief test. It is a test on a handkerchief. Discharge from the nose is blown into a handkerchief and is allowed to dry. If the discharge is CSF, the handkerchief will not stiffen. If the discharge is secretions from the nose, the handkerchief stiffens due to the presence of mucin in the nasal secretions. Now, how do we diagnose a case of CSF rhinorrhea? A good history is important. If there is a history of clear watery discharge from the nose, on bending the head or straining, it's suspicious. It may be seen on rising in the morning when the patient bends his head. Reservoir sign, fluid which had collected in the sinuses, particularly sphenoid, empties into the nose. It should be differentiated from nasal discharge of allergic 
obey the motor rhinitis. Nasal discharge stiffens the handkerchief because of its mucus content. Now this slide shows the differences between CSF and nasal secretions. Taking it one by one, features history in the CSF, nasal sinus surgery or head injury or intracranial tumour could lead to CSF fluid and one gets suspicious if there is such a history. Whereas nasal secretions, there is a history of sneezing, nasal stuffiness, itching in the nose or lacrimation. As far as flow of discharge is concerned, CSF, a few drops or a stream of fluid gushes down when bending forward or straining. It cannot be sniffed back. Whereas nasal secretions is a continuous discharge and no, if, no, no effect of bending forward or straining. It can be sniffed back. Now, what is the character of discharge? CSF fluid is thin, watery and clear, whereas nasal secretions usually slimy because of mucus or clear. Taste of the fluid. In CSF cases, it's a sweet taste, whereas nasal secretions give a salty taste. Sugar content more than 30 mg per cent compare the sugar in CSF after lumbar puncture as sugar is less in CSF in meningitis. Now it's less than 10 mg per cent in nasal secretions. And presence of B tattoo transferrin is always present in the CSF. It is specific for CSF. Whereas beta 2 transferrin is always absent in nasal secretions and it's, it's diagnostic. There is also a sign called double target sign or halo sign. CSF rhinorrhea after head trauma is mixed with blood. Shows this sign when collected on a piece of filtered paper. That is central red spot and peripheral lighter halo as is shown in the picture. Now we do a diagnostic nasal endoscopy which shows the site of leakage of CSF in a lot of cases. Whereas laboratory tests for CSF beta-2 transferring, a protein seen in CSF and not in nasal discharge, its presence is a specific and sensitive test. It requires only a few drops of CSF. Perilymph and aqueous are the only other fluids which contain this pr protein. Beta-trace protein, also specific for, is specific for CSF, it's secreted by meninges and choroid plexus. Localization of the site of leakage of CSF. We need a high resolution CT scan in coronal and axial cuts to see bony defects, as is shown in the picture. And other tests are CT cystenogram. It requires intrathecal injection of iohexol and CT scan to localize site of leakage. It is shown in the X-ray finding. Localization of site, MRI, T2 weighted image in depicting site of leak. It requires that CSF leak is active at the time of a scan. Indicated also if 
encephalocele or intracranial pathology is suspected. Now there is another test called intrathecal fluorescent study. It is an invasive procedure. Use of intrathecal radioactive substances has been abandoned. 0 0.25 to 0.5% fluorescent dye injected. Patient lies in 10 degrees head down position for some time. Dye appears green when seen with a blue filter. Talking about the treatment of CSF rhinorrhea, there is first of all a conservative approach in which we try medical means of treating the patient and that is early cases of post-traumatic CSF leak can be managed by conservative measures such as bed rest, elevation of the head of the bed, stool softeners, and avoidance of nose blowing, sneezing and straining. Prophylactic antibiotics can be used to prevent meningitis. These measures can be combined with lumbar drainage. Whereas if there is a need for surgical repair, one goes for a neurosurgical intracranial approach or there's other intranasal approaches as well. Talking about extra and there's extradural approaches as well. External ethmoidectomy for cribriform plate and ethmoid area leakage transeptal approach for a sphenoid, osteoplastic flap approach for frontal sinus leak. Transnasal endoscopic approach, most of the leaks from anterior cranial fossa and sphenoid sinus can be managed endoscopically. Principles of repair there's defining the site of leak, first of all. Then we prepare the graft site. Then the graft is laid, underlay grafting of fascia extradurally, followed by placement of mucosa. If bony defect is more than two centimeters, it is repaired with cartilage. Placement of surgical and gel foam further strengthens area. Now the types of grafts in the repair, it depends on the size and location of the defect. If the defect is large, it can be fixed with bone or cartilage graft taken usually from nasal turbinates. If the defect is small, it can be repaired with fascia later grafts, temporalis fascia as well. Fibrin glue, surge cell, gel foam is also used to stabilize the graft. This is a picture showing the repair of CSF rhinorrhea. After putting the graft, High antibiotic smeared nasal packing is done. Sometimes fat from thigh or abdomen is used to plug the defect in place of fascia graft. Lumbar puncture if CSF pressure is high and proper antibiotics are, are given prophylactically. Well, that's all about CSF rhinorrhea and its treatment. Thank you very much.